The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Apatria, flying solo for this wonderful Sunday, October 11th slate. We are talking game six of this Lakers Heat series, which has just been full of surprises, full of uh, teams just battling. You can tell both teams fighting through injuries on uh, on both sides, some more than others. But, uh, you know, what a performance from the Heat. I mean, just uh, absolutely just I, I can't even get it out of my mouth. I mean, Jimmy Butler playing over his head, it just proven that he's a superstar that he has been. It's just putting a lot of haters uh, to, to rest, I guess is what you could say. But the series isn't done. Obviously, not even close to it. Uh, right now, we're, you know, we're going to jump right into things in a moment. But, uh, you know, this is this is what we want to see. Uh, you know, we were a lot of people, once we saw Goran Dragic going down and, you know, Bam missing the first game, we got worried that this was going to be a steamroll. We got our six games. Uh, you know, we should be happy with this. Uh, I don't care which side uh, of, of the fence you're on. You know, we're, we're kind of seeing two dog-like players go at each other, being Jimmy Butler and LeBron James, both of them just putting on a spectacular performance yesterday. Uh, everything was, and I say yesterday, obviously, because we're recording this the night before, everything was just to a T for that game. The finish was, uh, you know, it was disappointing with the Danny Green shot. Um, I mean, obviously disappointing if you're a Laker fan, if you're a Heat fan, uh, you're, you're perfectly okay with that. But uh, a lot of people criticizing LeBron. Uh, my quick take on that is simply he, he made the right play. I mean, uh, he was he had about three people collapsing on him. Danny Green's wide open. We're talking Danny Green, who uh, is a career playoff player, a guy that's, you know, multiple championships on multiple different teams, a guy that's used to hitting big shots, clutch shots. Uh, he's done that before. And it was off the mark, uh, you know, off air, I think, with Santino Cocon on this one. And, uh, you know, part of us are saying that, you know, he's probably still dealing with a little bit of that hip injury and playing through that and, you know, regardless of the matter, I, I, all in all, it, I think it was the right play. Um, there's a decent chance that they close out in this game, uh, that being the Lakers, and, and we're not even talking about that play anymore. Uh, but regardless, you know, LeBron James and Jimmy Butler just came out there and put on one uh, hell of a performance. So we'll jump right into this, guys. Quick uh, shout out to our presenting sponsors, ExpressVPN. I can't hype these guys enough, and I've uh, I've probably already got my money's worth out of this one, but. Uh, you know, if you if you do not know what ExpressVPN is, it's uh, it's a VPN, and what separates them is obviously uh, there is no buffering, there is no lagging. They're extremely fast. They get the job done. You can stream it from phones, media consoles, smart TVs, anywhere you need it. Uh, and you know, if you're sitting there and saying, "Well, what's what's a VPN?" and what a VPN is, is it allows you to hide your IP address. And that's useful because you can maybe put it at Australia, like I've been doing, watching MasterChef Australia uh, on Netflix, or you can switch it to Netflix UK and you can watch Doctor Who. Uh, there's over 100 different countries. You can do it on Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. You can even do it for sports. There's so many good uses for it. And if you go over to expressvpn.com slash hoopball, you get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. So check them out, guys. Expressvpn.com slash hoopball. So I'm going to jump right into this, guys. Talk about the game. So Lakers coming in right now, uh, five-point favorites. It's a 214-and-a-half game total right now. So spread, spread's changing. Uh, this game, the series has been pretty much seven to seven-and-a-half points for most of these games. About 217 game totals is what we've been seeing for the most part. So they're expecting a little bit more of a, of a tight one here. And I think it's just maybe momentum has to be a factor. Uh, probably Anthony Davis's heel being a factor. Uh, that's probably two things that might have shifted the line a little bit more towards uh, Miami's way. Uh, and we'll start off just talking right off the top with the elephant in the room with the Lakers and Anthony Davis and that heel. Um, he's playing through it right now. And obviously, if you saw it happen, if you were watching that game, he was definitely in pain. He was sitting on the sideline for quite some time. Um, tried to walk it off, run it off. I mean, he still played 42 minutes even with coming out of the game. Still had a fantastic game. So 
you know, I'm not going to say don't play Anthony Davis. Obviously, if this is a showdown slate, you know, I'm trying to get both these guys in there, like I've been saying, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Uh, it's tough to get both of them if you're going to be playing, you know, one of them in your captain and looking at like Jimmy Butler on the other side. Uh, but that's why we generally, like I've been preaching, is prioritizing somebody a little bit cheaper in that captain spot. Uh, that way you can make sure you get all these studs because at the very least, if you you know, these studs, you know they're going to hit it. Especially when we're talking to the Lakers, they're so top-heavy and reliant upon LeBron James and Anthony Davis that uh, we know that probably, you know, 70% of their DK points as a team is coming from these two guys. Um, so, you know, LeBron James is the guy I do prefer over AD simply because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not worried about as much injury. Yes, he's questionable right now with the with the groin injury, but it's LeBron James, the groins, he's always hitting that, getting hit with that questionable tag. Don't worry about that. He'll be playing 100%. And uh, you know he's going to want to close this out. You know, LeBron James has been in a 3-1 situation himself before in the past and came back and won it. Uh, you do not want to leave that back door open. I'm sure he has that in the back of his mind. Uh, I mean, just watching, he was hitting logo three-pointers. Uh, the shot is there for him. He is focused. He's locked in. I just think it's going to come down to him just taking over and just going complete king mode. Um, I, I'm, I'm not saying he did it in that last one. I think he absolutely did. Uh, but he's going in there with a purpose right now. And there's nothing like losing a game that you felt like you should have won uh, and then trying to bounce back from that. So both those guys very much at play. If you wanted to fade one, like I said, probably be Davis. But uh, just be careful with that unless you're you know, going heat heavy. Um, and you're expecting you know Miami to take this and make this into a game seven, and that's kind of your game script. Uh, just be careful with fading these two guys. Rajon Rondo is another guy that we could definitely look at, and he looked well, uh, looked very good. Obviously, we didn't get the scoring that we were looking for, only shot one of seven from the field, uh, but he was chipping in multiple different ways. The five rebounds, the five assists, two steals, it's pretty much Rondo-like. We know we're pretty much getting a floor of at least 20 points, uh, and he only did that in 18 minutes, so... Uh, you know, any other time we could see Rondo playing somewhere in the mid 20s. And in that case, we can end up getting, you know, 25 to 30 DK points. So he's definitely another guy that uh, I will keep in play for me. Um, you know, looking at Kuzma. But um, the minutes aren't there yet. So I, you know, I, I can't trust it. I don't, you know, seeing how this playoffs has been going so far, I don't think that anytime soon. We're going to get those minutes from him. They're going to sit there at the low, uh, the low 20s. Uh, and with when he's playing on the floor, he's generally sharing it with LeBron and with Davis. Uh, and we're not going to end up getting any sort of peripheral stats for him in that sort of case either. So uh, not a defensive guy either. So unless he just knocks down 80% of his shots, it's really tough to see him really break in a slate. So I'll probably just keep fading Kuzma. It's been working well for me. Uh, Danny Green is the the big question mark and is going to be on everybody's minds. He's probable. He's, you know, he's got the questionable tag next to him. Uh, he is probable for this game, and he left a, a you know a sour taste in everybody's mouth at this point, uh, where I can see a lot of people just wanting to get away from him. I'm not going to go towards it and you know drive down, you know that that light at the end of the tunnel. I don't I don't. It's kind of dim for me, uh, but I'm not going to completely fade it either. I think he makes a lot of sense in tournaments as a pivot. I think Caldwell Pope is the obvious and better play, but he's also uh, you know a little bit more expensive as well. So it's it's it's. You might not have the money. The savings of four hundred, or I'm sorry, one thousand uh, dollars, might be enough for you. Fourteen hundred. Look at me. Uh, Kuzma is a thousand more. Fourteen hundred more for uh, Caldwell Pope over Danny Green. Uh, but Danny Green still offers the defensive stats. You know that big shot is what it's going to be on everyone's mind, and you can expect low ownership. Uh, Caldwell Pope is definitely the much safer play for looking in your cash games. Just knowing that he's pretty much locked into thirty plus minutes. He's been playing fantastic. I mean. A lot of people make the joke, and you see the running joke on Twitter, is that you know bullying works because Caldwell Pope was taking a beating from uh, Laker fans earlier in the year, and uh, now they're all taking credit to it, uh, to his great performance now. But he's getting double-digit shot attempts in three out of the last four games. A lot of those coming from deep, uh, and you know he's going to chip in three to two uh, rebounds, assists, steal. So I have no problem looking at Caldwell Pope. He's probably the guy I'd honestly prefer over Rondo slightly just with how well he's been playing and how much I expect LeBron to just go into complete takeover mode. Um, and then, you know, if I'm looking at any of their dirt, dirt cheap options, it's probably just Caruso for me at 3,800. Uh, maybe a stab at Howard here and there, but, you know, not too promising. Probably better off looking at some of the Miami guys uh, for some value. And that's, Probably all I have for the Lakers at this point. I mean, uh, I'll be playing LeBron. I'll be playing Davis. I'll be playing a little bit of Rondo. I'll play more Caldwell Pope than I will Rondo. No Kuzma. Very, very slight Danny Green as a 
low owned pivot. Um, and then just Alex Caruso, where I really need to save some money. Slide over to the Miami side of things. Uh, things have been going well over there in Miami. Just seeing LeBron, uh, I'm sorry, Jimmy Butler after that game, after the press conference, this dude's exhausted. 47 minutes played. Uh, and he, he's going to probably do the same thing again in this game. This dude knows what it's going to take to win, and he's going to have to leave absolutely everything that he has on the court. Uh, you can guarantee he's probably getting the day off today. He's probably icing up. He could barely walk after that when he was so sore. Uh, but I have no issues playing Jimmy Butler. I, I was actually pretty happy. He was the guy I was looking at in the most captain spots. But point Jimmy Butler is a beautiful thing, and it looks like it could be a potential triple-double every single night. Put up 82 DK points in that last one uh, with another triple-double, 35, 12, and 11. Also chipped in, a, you know, just a measly five steals. And he did it shooting 50, 58% from the field, man. It's not like it's even uh, it's even happened to accident. He's getting through the line, 12 to 12 from the line. And that's Jimmy Butler's calling uh, calling card in this series. Uh, he's not going to be the guy that's going to sit there and take, you know, eight to 12 three-pointers every single game. But he will get his shots. And when he's not getting his shots, uh, he's going to get to the rim. And, you know, there was one play that I think he, uh, you know, he went straight up in the air. It might have been Dwight Howard. Um but, you know, had to obviously make an adjustment in midair. And it was it was such a strong play. And it's not something that you just see from any other guy who can adjust like that uh, and come down with the shot. And it was an and one. And, you know, Jimmy Butler's definitely got to be one of your primary targets when you're looking at any of these heats, as long as he's going to continue to play point guard and have the ball in his hands. Uh, and that kind of takes a little bit of the thunder away from guys like Tyler Hero. Uh, because that's where we're really seeing him thrive is when, he, you know, he comes on and he's taking the ball up and Jimmy's playing a little bit more off ball. Uh, but now we're getting to see a little bit more of Tyler Hero and be uh, just pretty much relied on as a, as like a scorer, uh, spotting up, taking three-pointers. And they're going to need that in this one. So uh, I don't mind looking at Hero, but I'm definitely less likely to play him as I was earlier in the series and back in that, uh, that Celtic series where we're playing him all the time. Bam out of bio is coming at 9,600. The minutes, not where we still want them to be. I mean, play 38, I guess we could say that that is where we want them to be. But if Jimmy Butler is playing 47 and Bam was completely healthy, 100%, one would think he's playing at least 44, 45. Um, you know, Bam's in great shape. He's crazy athletic, and he wants this just as bad as Jimmy does. These two guys, uh, you would expect, are their two best players and playing, you know, all to the wall. So, I wouldn't expect I would expect a few more minutes from Bam in this one. And now we're kind of seeing a little bit of a price dip. So he's coming back into play. Now, I don't think he has that same upside that we were going to see, you know, earlier. Um, mostly not not even because of the injury, just because of this matchup. So a lot of people might just contribute these games to the to the injury, but you know, LA plays great defense. It's not a it's not a secret. One of the league's best defenses on the interior. So you know, it warrants the fade, but I, I'll probably have very, very slight exposure to him in my tournaments um, just because that price dip being very close to Tyler Hero. I think some people are going to you know, struggle with that pick right there. Um, and you can kind of just make that pivot and play one of those two guys. So I'm looking to play Butler, one of Bam and Tyler Hero. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.